Yo, my people, just a quick note. I am not an astrologer. This is my personal knowledge from being a Pisces and to give another perspective on the most complex, misunderstood and underestimated sign. This is not to glorify or give people evil ideas. It's for self-awareness and a potential warning to others. Not everyone will have the same views and experiences and there's nothing wrong with that. Now let's get to it. Ahead of time. It is not uncommon for a Pisces to at least once in their lifetime fall head over heels with a complete stranger. Pisces are the epitome of love at first sight because every Pisces is a walking romance novel searching for that special someone to complete their story. Every Pisces at one stage in their life, especially when young, will be told things like, We're moving a bit too fast. We need to slow down. You love me? How? I just met you the other day. Thanks for the flowers, but where did you get my address from? This is Pisces' default state. Life experiences can change it, but Pisces are naturally loved up and ready to share it. The reason for this is because the planet of love and beauty, Venus, is exalted in Pisces. Making Pisces love to love, share love, appreciate beauty, spread love, be loved. And Neptune, the planet of dreams, imagination, universal love and all that magical stuff, rules Pisces. So put those together and you're in fantasy land. When we're talking the Pisces fantasy, that will mainly involve another person romantically. I've seen it mentioned somewhere that Pisces will fantasize about how to deal with their enemies, but that's not true. Pisces, even the ones who do evil, don't have a genuine lust for it to be fantasizing about it. There's no feelings involved. They just use their imagination to plan on how to deal with their enemies. I try to show many real life examples of this in these videos. If that plan stays in their imagination, then the person was not worth it. It's as simple as that. Pisces fantasies has feelings involved. Pisces revenge doesn't in the end. Fantasy land, the pink clouds, all that is when it involves a love interest. A Pisces without a love interest will either be completely grounded and focused on making money in a Taurian type way or looking for a vibe to ride, whether that's by getting high, chilling with friends etc, catch a good earthy vibe. But throw a person of interest in a Pisces path and they will levitate off the ground and start to float. Their life will become all about that other person like a Libra. So this is how the walking romance novel normally works. Pisces will be drifting through life, la la la, la la la, la la, going about their day, and then they'll come across someone their soul just locks onto. Pisces will stop everything they're doing and go into a trance like state. Oh my god, who are they? they they're perfect. They will unknowingly stare at the person, the body will be staring, the eyes will be fixated on the person, but what is really happening behind the scenes is the soul is scanning the other's soul. It's reading the person, it's metaphysically touching the person, just to fill them out, understand who they are. It's downloading a simplified version of the person to get a quick picture. Now, if you catch the Pisces doing this, you will see the Pisces in a daze and could even be weirded out. But more times than not, Pisces will do this quickly and then turn away, act like they didn't even see you. That's if it's a setting where the Pisces knows they will see you again, like work, college, school, gym, so they can approach you another time, but if it's a one-off thing, like in public, the fish will go fishing. If it's a male Pisces, they will approach you with charm. They won't even think about rejection, they'll just do it. They will not allow the opportunity of connecting with you pass by, because they want this feeling inside to be matched in the real. If it's a female Pisces, they will open their self up for your approach. I mean, you'll have the female fishes that may even approach you. But typically, they will emit an energy of come talk to me. Their interest will notice them and when they do, they won't hesitate approaching the Pisces because all they will feel is open and welcoming energy. Pair that with eye contact and a slight smile from the Pisces woman and that fishing line is being reeled in. Now once this connection has been formed, like numbers has been exchanged, the fantasies will start to stream through that Pisces constantly whilst they are not around you. It will happen anyway, but it's more realistic after they've connected with you. As I said, Pisces are known to move very fast when it comes to relationships, but understand that this is fast to you, but in the past to the Pisces. Because Pisces does not move on the same timeline as everyone else. Cosmically speaking, time doesn't exist to a Pisces. 
it's always constantly moving forward. So when Pisces moves on Earth's timeline, to the Pisces, current time is like a memory. Ever heard the saying, right person, wrong time? With Pisces, it's right person in due time. So for example, when you share your first kiss with that Pisces, the Pisces has already lived through this kiss, weeks, months or days before, depending on when that happens from when they first see you. If they saw you a year ago and approached you just last week, your first kiss to that Pisces is almost a year ago too. Deep that. They already had a fantasy about it. To you, you met the Pisces the other day. They took your number. By the next time you see that Pisces, in their head, you've already kissed, already made love. Hell, you could be pregnant and be engaged, or you've proposed to that Pisces on the timeline they're on. The Pisces has gone through all of that with you already. All the while, in reality, you don't even know the Pisces' last name yet. And the Pisces doesn't know you. They just see you two together down the line. It sounds crazy, but this is how a Pisces avoids wasting time. Remember, they are trying to have their perfect romance novel. They aren't trying to waste time with people. So Pisces will mentally travel through the timeline with you, travel far and deep to the ends of the ocean with you, long before it happens in reality. So from a Pisces sticks around to see things play out, that should show you from there that they literally see a future with you. This is also why Pisces has a reputation for ghosting or just completely going off someone. It's because they mentally travel down that timeline with you and your soul and saw where it ended. So to save going through all that in reality, they just shut you off from now. The ghost will ghost. Whereas to you, that could seem like they didn't even give you two a chance. Why did they block me? All I said was I ate Taco Bell and my stomach was feeling funny. Astrologers talk about the 12th house being about past lives. But from how I've just explained it, you can see how Pisces literally lives a past life in this reality too. All Pisces have that I've been here, done this energy. This is what others may pick up from their Pisces interest too, but don't take it personal. They're just going through the motions and keeping track of the stage their mind is on alongside the timeline Earth is on. This is why Pisces get seen as psychic. It's just they are always moving ahead of time. All that travelling and gaining wisdom is where Jupiter comes in, Pisces other ruler. Jupiter is what gives Pisces the foresight along with Neptune to an extent. So it could be your second date you're having with a Pisces and you're taking a walk home at the end of it. Then the Pisces goes, hey, I love you, you know. You'll pause like, whoa, what? Then the Pisces will just smile, look away and keep walking with you. Having you stunned. What the hell? Did they just drop the L bomb like that so soon? But the Pisces is saying that because they are already in the future where you two tell each other you love each other every time you come off the phone, etc. Real life deja vu. So they will tell you, I love you like they've said it before in a casual way that will throw you way off. Where you're thinking to yourself, nah, that's a red flag. Didn't they see the way I ate that chicken? I still got the food stuck in my teeth. Even though this is normal and ideal to the Pisces, this will throw most people off and put them off the Pisces too. Where the Pisces can ruin that timeline with the person from not using wisdom. The Pisces just wants you to catch up to their timeline, but it's not realistic for most. Kurt Cobain once said, I'm on my time with everyone. You ever heard of Pisces being scatterbrained or indecisive? It's because they can see all these timelines, all these possibilities. None of us have one timeline. We have millions of timelines. So if one doesn't work out at one point, you just shift on to another. It's dimensions. Pisces ends up understanding this concept more than anyone else. This is why they are so adaptable to the changes in life. The earlier a Pisces adapts to reality with the visions of the future and using wisdom correctly, is how they are able to write their novel with that special person sooner. Because a Pisces will potentially ruin many timelines when young, being filled with so much love but not enough wisdom or emotional intelligence yet. So whatever moment you have with a Pisces, that moment is a memory to the Pisces. They've lived it. They've dreamed of it. Whereas to you, it's just what's happening now. Where a Pisces has big problems with their fantasies and imagination is, Pisces can choose to delude themselves and skip information. Or, Neptune can hide certain things then reveal it at a later date, 
like some cruel joke. Neptune is a really difficult ruler for Pisces to have, but it pays off in the end. Neptune is like Venus's high cousin. Hey, you like what you see over there, Venus? Now get high with me and dream about them. Venus and Neptune are the rose tints. So same thing as always, a Pisces could stumble across someone and go into a trance. When their soul is scanning the person, they could purposely skip red flags and ignore certain bad energies and do a very loose scan of the person because they're really good looking, for example, just focusing on the Venus element in the interaction. They could connect with the person and start to have fantasies, but during the fun soul travelling in the Pisces mind, they get a quick cutscene of their self looking in a mirror with a black eye and bruises. Quickly skip past it and continue on with the positive scenarios. Neptune shows Pisces these things. If not initially, then eventually. The rose tints are mainly through Venus, but Neptune will give you glimpses of nightmares lurking in this timeline with this person, or delude you until later. If a Pisces ignores the signs, ignores their intuition, this is where they will get mistreated and it's not that they didn't see it coming, it's because they chose to not see it coming or Neptune hid it from them. You need to understand how Disney-like a Pisces fantasies are when fixated on someone. We're talking Cinderella and the glass slipper, fairy godmother, Prince Charming returning the slipper. We're talking Bella, loving a beast who transforms back to the prince he originally was, fighting Gaston on top of castles in the rain and shit. We're talking Sleeping Beauty being awoken by a kiss. We're talking Elizabeth Taylor dressed in a see-through... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wrong video. Sorry, people. Wrong video. It's all magical fairy tale stuff. So when Pisces balances all this stuff out, this is when you'll have Pisces that are extremely picky in choosing a partner or just stay single. But the fantasies never go. And sometimes those fantasies isn't even of a person a Pisces has met. It could be a person in their dreams or an ideal person the Pisces has made up in their head. But those type of fantasies are not as powerful as the ones the Pisces has when they have a real life love interest. Me and my close friend in secondary school, who was a Scorpio, used to always reference this South Park clip when there was someone we liked. It's where Stan sees his love interest Wendy. Anytime she appears on the screen, he goes into a trance and starts singing in his head. There's a girl that I like, do 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 do. So me and the Scorpio used to always use that line before announcing a new crush. We used to quote the whole film to be fair, check it out if you haven't. But what was actually funny to me was, that is how I actually used to be when I liked someone, deep inside. Yo, how was your weekend bro? It was cool, but it happened again bro. Not again. Mm-hmm. There's a girl that I like, do 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 do. Now, more than ever, she gives me butterflies. All the water signs are like this, but Scorpios are a bit more realistic with it. Well, earlier than a Pisces is because they fear getting hurt, same as a Cancer. When it's a young Pisces, that fear of being hurt by another isn't there. There's no protective shell or claws like Cancer and Scorpio. We just literally float off into a world of lust and daydreams. Fantasies about girls is literally what got me through school days. I'll keep it real with you lot. There was never a time a girl wasn't on my mind. That was my default mind state which was active from as far back as my memory goes. The fiction world is powerful. You've got people who come up with imaginary characters in their bedrooms that big grown adults in thousands ends up dressing up as and going to conventions together. All that is Neptune. We've got costume shops strictly for your sexual fantasies where you can make dreams come true by dressing up as your partner's favourite character, for example. I know sex is normally associated with Scorpio in astrology from Mars and Scorpio ruling the genitals, but Pisces are freaks too. I mean freak freaks. The author of Fifty Shades of Grey is a Pisces, E.L. James. We've got best-selling books that have been made into movies that all came from a person's mind. We've got meet your favourite triple X star conventions, which is crazy, but whatever floats your boat. All that fantasy imagination stuff is Neptune water energy and mercury and other shit but you get the gist neptune's the baseline the good thing is this world allows for fantasy to become reality and this is why a pisces can afford to dream because this world's an illusion too so when pisces realizes this and is aware of their powers they are not looking to waste time if i can dream it 
I can live it. I believe. But this is not always a good thing. Frozen in time. The Pisces fantasy is selfish. It's an obsession. Could be a lasting one or a short-lived one, but it's an obsession. So if we go back to the Stan and Wendy example, when Wendy starts talking, Stan's eyes goes into a lustful daze while his song plays in his head. Remember, Neptune is music and dance, all that fluid energy. All Stan sees is Wendy's lips moving whilst hearing his own song. So he's not even hearing what Wendy is saying. This is all selfish. And this is what happens when the Pisces becomes obsessed before actually learning about or accepting the person for who they really are. It's even worse if the person is really attractive too because this is when Venus clouds the Pisces head even more and Barracudas like shiny things. I want to quickly break this down about the water signs because Scorpio is the one that always gets called obsessive. I'll use the show You on Netflix. It's about a guy called Joel whose obsessions turns to possession and death, yada yada. He is a Scorpio and the show is written by a Scorpio but the stages he goes through in the show is each water sign and I'll explain. These are spoilers but still watch the show if you haven't. So Joel will start off obsessing over a random person, then he will end up possessing them and then ends up licking them. Different people, same shit. It's in reverse. Pisces is obsession. It will constantly think about the person, fantasize, let their thoughts run wild but in a Pisces true nature there's no possession. Pisces will not try to own someone because Pisces owns nothing, not even their own soul. So that's as far as it will go. Even if they are with the person, the person isn't the Pisces, they're still a free person. The word mine isn't in an evolved Pisces vocabulary. So Joe will see someone he likes then start stalking and fantasizing about them, breaking into their house to sniff their underwear and all that creepy stuff. There's one scene where Joe is outside a love interest house watching them through their window, then ends up at the thought of making love to them in the middle of the street. Now, I'm sorry to do my people dirty and no, I wouldn't do something like this myself unless I knew where Megan Good lived. But if I said to you, what sign is more likely to do that and you don't say Pisces, then you are lying. I'll let you off if you said any mutable sign, but it's the same as triple X and self-pleasure. It's all fantasy stuff. All that is in Pisces world. But at this stage with Joel, there has been no physical contact, just the odd convo if the love interest enters his store. So this is how he starts off in a Piscean way. Scorpio is obsession and possession. With Scorpios, they won't just stay in the mind like that. Yeah, they can fantasize about someone whilst hashking it in front of their window too, but Scorpio will want to eventually own this person. That Mars energy will want to conquer them, but in a loving way. Joe will search all this information up about his love interests, like finding their social medias, etc., and want to physically know everything about them. That's that Scorpio laser focus energy. But when he goes too far and gets caught out, he ends up isolating the person in some underground box he invented. Now, this can include Pisces actions too, due to imprisonment. A Pisces will isolate someone for a purpose. But Joel ends up here because his obsession leads to possession, wanting to control the person and the situation when he gets caught out. This is literally how some Scorpios end up stinging their self because they don't know where to stop. Scorpio's love is not for the weak. They will slowly destroy you if your game isn't on point. And then finally, cancer is possession. Joel ends up 187 in his love interest when the kitchen gets too hot. You can think, no, cancer isn't like that. We need to remember, things doesn't really start becoming about another person until we get to the seventh house in Libra. I keep telling you lot, cancers are low key the most evil of the three in a selfish way in regards to the dark side of their emotions. It's the most manipulative sign. It attempts the manipulation more than Scorpio and Pisces because it's cardinal. It's just not as successful as the other two when it comes to manipulation in the long run. That shy cute girl next door with the glasses who oh, ain't done this before act don't fool Pisces or Scorpio. Cancers are strong as ish but appear as soft or even softer than a Pisces. Nah it's not that at all with them. Cancer is ruled by the moon. That's changes of moods and mother energy. 
The reason Joel ends up killing them is because by then they are seen as his possessions and only his possessions as he is no longer obsessed with them. Cancer is about personal possessions, not like Taurus wears materials but like close people and memorabilia. But unlike a Scorpio, a Cancer can still cling to you when they don't have feelings for you anymore. Scorpios will leave when the obsession's gone, while Cancer can still keep you locked in the shell. When Pisces and Scorpio commits 187s, it isn't from a I own you place. It sometimes can be from a Scorpio, but mainly it's from a fuck around and find out place. Cancer's 187 is from a I brought you into this world so I can take you out of it place. Like a mother. You see it in the animal kingdom. Mothers who no longer want their offspring. They will ruthlessly either 187 them or leave them to die. Or they will do 187s out of passion. Heat of the moment scenarios. That's the stages Joel goes through. You might can't pinpoint signs, but it's easy to pinpoint elements. Cancer is possession. Hey man, who's that girl I keep seeing you walking with? That's my girlfriend, why? Oh, I've never seen you hug or even talk to her when you're walking together. That's my girlfriend. Mind your business before I show you attention instead. Okay, sorry man. Scorpio is obsession and possession. You are mine forever. I know, babe. I'm just at work. My mum made me lunch. Why? Why what, babe? Why did your mum make you lunch? Huh? Only I can make you lunch. Don't talk to me. What? Hello? Babe, are you there? Pisces is obsession. He's just so cute. Have you even spoken to him yet? Yeah, he took me to the shard and then we had lunch by the river. No, in reality, have you spoken to him? Oh no, not yet. I keep hiding when I see him. I'm shy. So with Pisces, the obsession can be a non-physical stage. I mean, what's true love without a certain degree of obsession? But possession doesn't play any part in true love, nor does obsession without healthy escalation. So as a Pisces is fantasizing and seeing the future of you two together, the obsession will become very strong in reality. All the while, you two may not even be in any contact whatsoever. Albert Einstein once said, The gift of fantasy has meant more to me than my talent for absorbing positive knowledge. But this is also another way the timeline won't manifest. If the Pisces doesn't get past this obsessive stage to reach true love when you do connect. Even though you cannot be obsessed with yourself when you're obsessed with someone else, obsession is still selfish. That's all going on in your head and only yours in reality. Even if what you're obsessing about is yet to come, in reality, it's not here yet. So the other person is none the wiser. They're just going through the process of getting to know you. For the Pisces to overcome obsession and truly love the person for who they are, that's when Neptune's like, hey, you don't actually love the person. You're in love and obsessed with your own mind. You now kind of know them and have seen your future together, but now look at them for who they really are and not who you want them to be. If you're still obsessed with them after this revelation, then true love is unlocked for you, little Pisces. Remember, Pisces took a quick scan of the person initially and then is going by the fantasies and visions of the future with the person whilst downloading them more and more each time they see them. Neptune at any time can be like, yeah, I can see you've downloaded 65% of them, but I'll help you out. Here's all the info right here. Like it or lump it. Oh, and they don't really like cats. Bet your fantasy future glimpse didn't show you that, eh? This step alone can kill a Pisces ego. It will give the Pisces a major ick of their own mind. When they realise the feelings their own mind conjured up and put it onto another person, but this is necessary so they can truly love someone for who they are in a selfless way. Because at the end of it all, Neptune is unconditional love. That's what love is. There's nothing worse than being obsessed with someone for a long time then Neptune lifts off your Venus shades. It's a humbling experience when Neptune sobers you up and Jupiter starts chiming in. It's like realising you love your man so much but not liking them as a person. Yeah, you've got a future with them, but that future person isn't fully what you saw at the first in the fantasy. Earth's time and Neptune is what shows you the rest. 
It's like tickling your girlfriend that you love so much and thinking it's all pink clouds and soft teddy bears, fluffy animals. Then she farts in your face from laughing too much. Where reality hits you hard and you're like, what the hell? Girls don't fart. Ew, it smells too. Now you're looking at her funny when in reality, she's just a human like you and me. But for the fantasy to manifest correctly, the Neptune revelation must happen because Venus alone can result in conditional love. Even though Pisces is not possessive, an obsession can lead to Pisces becoming possessed. When you look at obsession as a gateway, you will see why that's possible. Have you seen what happens when a Scorpio is obsessed with someone that doesn't want them? Demonic. That's that, if I can't have you, then no one can energy. Obsession without a physical connection can either go two ways for a Pisces, good or bad. Now I'm sure most of you are aware of sex demons like succubus and others. If a Pisces doesn't act on their obsession, their fantasy, especially at older ages like approaching the person they like, for example, then these demons can and will possess the Pisces. This can lead to stalking, perversion, peeping Tom, triple X addiction, excessive self-pleasuring, weird fetishes, blow-up dolls, waifus, you name it. Remember what I said earlier with the Pisces gaze, going into a trance when they spot a love interest. That happens because a door in the Pisces soul has been opened. A page in their romance novel has been opened. That only gets closed when either a Pisces travels through the fantasy to see it's not worth it and ghosts you, or it stays in the fantasy without physical escalation where something else fills the gap and closes it for the Pisces. As a Pisces, you don't want no external figure closing any door in your life because that means something you're unaware of has come in and closed it. The hidden enemies of the 12th house is not always people. You see when you pleasure yourself, if you could see what is happening spiritually when you are doing it and who is there with you when you do it, thinking you're alone, then you will never look at triple X or touch yourself like that ever again in your life. The amount of trauma you are letting into your soul when you watch those things is one thing, but when you pleasure yourself to it, you're connecting with that energy and it takes your energy. Look up how many triple X stars commit suicide at a young age in that industry. You don't know the real energy behind the videos like if one person's only taking part to pay off a debt or something. You get the urge to dash cough or flick the bean when you're not even horny. That's because something is forcing you to do it to feed them. And I can't fully speak for the Piscianas because I don't know what you lot watch when you're DJing down there, scratching the decks. It can possibly be worse for you lot because you females are literally leaving yourself open. Not only spiritually, but physically too, without anyone physical around. Apologies if that sounds crude, but you get what I'm saying. But fellas, if you wouldn't sit in the corner playing with your member, watching two people get down in front of you, then doing it behind the screen doesn't change nothing. You're still a peeping Tom, watching the next man live out his fantasy. Deep that. I won't be a hypocrite. I went through that phase. Much later in life than the typical person as well, because I was always getting some in the real. I mean, as a teen, I did try many times, but I had options. Plus, my dreams took care of that when I didn't get none. So if I told you what age I first made myself, you would think I'm lying. So I won't say. But as a Pisces, I am so glad I wasn't doing that in my early teens because that triple X world is the devil's playground and I would have been swinging on all the swings. What eventually put me off is, A, hearing some man groaning in my ear as I'm watching it, it made me deep on watching the next man's pleasure. And B, the lack of energy and drive I had afterwards to do real life things. Plus I always had a feeling of defeat a couple minutes after. And I don't know about you, but I don't like losing, especially to no demons. Live your own fantasies with someone real Pisces. Addictions are entities. And it's no surprise Pisces are known for addictions. The 12th house is a portal. It's a door to the universe. All the good and all the bad things. And this is where it gets tricky because the older Pisces gets and goes through unfulfilling experiences, they can choose to abandon the chase of seeing a fantasy through and rather stick to being alone with the fake stuff. 
I'm talking pleasure devices with turbo speeds. Robots programmed to swallow the whole- Yes daddy. Yes daddy. Pisces who stay single preferring to indulge in these things are secretly possessed. I don't care about that I hate people or scared to get hurt again stuff. We're not Scorpios. We passed that stage. No Pisces should be scared of nothing. We don't have all these fantasies and vivid imagination to stay to ourselves. It's to be used to connect with another. I don't care what the robot gawk machine can do with its throat. True love is the most powerful energy in the universe as far as we know. As far as Neptune and Jupiter and the creator of everything has shown us. Fantasy involving others, like focusing on a love interest, is not escapism to our Pisces. It's manifestation. It's a journey. It's an experience and potentially the final chapter to your romance novel. Some Pisces only have two chapters in their romance novel and found that person. Others have 13 chapters, 50 chapters. I'm not here to judge, but I respect those not giving up than those with the rabbit and a habit. That default setting Neptune and Venus has us in is not to be turned off or replaced, it's to be cherished. Fantasy involving only yourself like watching random people get off with each other is negative escapism which opens doors to evil. Don't get me wrong, going monk mode for a few years is cool but don't let that be forever Pisces. Fishes stay on the move, not in a corner with a rabbit on level 2. And if a Pisces decides to act after going down those solo routes where their door got shut by an unknown guest, that is where you will have a Pisces being worn by an entity doing unspeakable perverted things like watching you through your window. Huh? What was that? What's going on? I thought I saw someone at my window. Probably a tree shadow or something. So what was you saying? How does it fit? It's kind of snug. Makes my butt look way too big though. I'm going to take them off. This is where Pisces will make their fantasies play out involving other people, whether others like it or not. What the hell? I left my boxes right here. Hey, is anyone else in here? Nathan, quit playing. Give me my boxes back, man. Why does it smell like that crystal girl's perfume who just stares at me in class? This is a guy's locker room if anyone's hiding in here. Nathan. Crystal? This is the dark side of the Pisces fantasies that has now manifested. All that alone time with their own thoughts and fantasies will not stay in the mind. Pisces are here to connect with others, no matter how long they isolate or hide their self away. John Wayne Gacy once said, I was always inside my own head, my own world. And we all saw how that turned out. If Pisces takes up negative habits whilst being hidden and isolated, where a demon is able to enter, then it's no laughing matter when they take to the streets. Triple X is dangerous for everybody, especially the mutable signs, and especially Pisces because it's every sign. Ted Bundy, a Sagittarius once said, I've lived in prison a long time. I've met some men who are motivated to commit violence just like me, and without exception, every one of them was involved in pornography. If Joe from you was a Pisces and he had you in his underground isolation box, they couldn't even air what will take place to you on TV. Another positive yet negative about a Pisces is they can match your fantasy. Whatever you want them to be, whatever you see in the future, a Pisces can be that for you. But when a Pisces is doing this, it's not authentic. True love isn't changing yourself to adapt to someone. True love is a seamless alignment of the souls. Yeah, a Pisces can make your dream come true. But if the Pisces dreams and fantasies don't align with yours, then that will potentially end up being a waste of time. Because in love, a Pisces doesn't want to hurt anybody. So if you love a Pisces, they can stick around for years just to not hurt you. Whether they love you or not. This is also another dark side of Pisces. So you can be thinking it's all good. Requesting your Pisces woman to do things for you, for example. Babe, can you wear the fairy outfit for me tonight? Sure babe, which colour? The green see-through one. Mm. Oh, specific. I'll be your Ariel tonight, don't worry. No, that's the little mermaid you're thinking of with Flounder and Sebastian. The light green fairy costume with the magical wand and fairy dust is Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. 
You know where they fight Captain Hawk and stuff? How can you get the characters mixed up? Okay, no need to be rude. It was a simple mistake. What are you, the Disney dictator? I haven't watched those movies since I was five. How about you? Is there something you want to tell me? Whoa, where did that come from? And what are you trying to say? Nothing, just leave it. I'll be your Tinkerbell tonight, don't worry. And leave the Captain Hawk outfit out too, for round two. Oh, okay. Gonna dress up for me for a change? Nah, nah, I want you to wear it after. You want me to dress up as Captain Hook for you? Yeah, babe, if that's cool. Okay. She'll still make your dreams come true, but same time, deep in her heart, you are not even in her fantasies. She don't even see a future with you, but will create one with you to keep peace. Make you feel special when she feels nothing for you. So the role she plays may not even be as fluid and smooth as it should be, but it will be enough to keep you happy. Astrology teaches you that Pisces are delusional and live in a fantasy world. But how about the delusional state a Pisces can put others in? This is how many people end up getting hurt by a Pisces when they don't really mean to hurt them. But if a Pisces doesn't truly connect with you in their soul, they will eventually swim away in the end regardless of how you feel about them or what your fantasies are. Sleepwalking on a Timeline So to recap, the Pisces fantasy starts from a trance they go into when they see a love interest. When they make a move on the person, their imagination will run wild but they also will be seeing what the future holds for the two of you. If good, they will stay. If not, they will ghost. Or they can ignore warnings and end up hurt. They do not know the person they see in the future. They will learn about them on the way. If they don't make a move on the person, after the trance, it opens a door for negative entities to enter the Pisces fantasy land through negative practices they indulge in alone. So with saying that, a Pisces will feel like they are sleepwalking when with you, living out their dreams. Do you like me biting your neck, baby? I love it. It's just how I remember it. Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. Keep going. Keep going. Who else has been biting your neck? No, no one. Chill. I'm going home. This is also how some Pisces can give off the impression that they're cheating on you when they aren't. They've just seen the cheat sheet to how this unfolds, but got too excited and fucked it up. As I said at the start, when a Pisces doesn't have a love interest, the Pisces is just focusing solely on making money or catching a vibe. Any kind of vibe. Ever heard of the Ponzi scheme? There's no way fellow Pisces Charles Ponzi is successfully executing that with a crush around that they can focus on. So a balance definitely has to be found. But with Neptune and Venus supporting a Pisces, love has to be in that Pisces life. We are supposed to be living in a dream in reality with someone. The trance we all have been in at least once is proof of that. That's what connecting with another soul does for us. It's what unlocks the fantasy land in the first place. Fantasy lands like a romantic sidestep from the already fertile imagination that we all must at least experience once if we don't have it forever. It's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Cause then, life will seem more worth it than it seemed. How are you here when you're the person of my dreams? Is this the ocean why I'm talking very deep? Wait, am I floating? Or am I walking in my sleep? Since I met you, my book's open, can you close it? In return, I'll give you love chocolates and roses. Plus, I hope it's not too early for me to kiss you. Because I took a trip and literally saw my life with you. This whole world is a fantasy. A big ball of illusions and dreams where everything is not as it seems. Because of this, Pisces fantasies will always be real. Don't mix fantasy with imagination. A Pisces fantasizes about what they can attain. This can extend to the perfect job or the perfect house. The CEO of Louis Vuitton recently overtook Elon Musk to become the richest person in the world. They call him the Terminator, Bernard Arnold. And guess what sign he is? This whole world we live in is now his fantasy in reality. But if there's one thing that unlocks that fantasy pathway with Pisces, is another soul. The Pisces fantasy will more times than not involve love. And all jokes aside Pisces, give people time, especially you matured Pisces, 
because you lot will lock others off in a heartbeat. Don't be those people who locks into that trance and then hears the person's a Gemini and then gets the ick. Just from that alone, see where that timeline goes, travel and see whilst getting to know the person in real life. All these things like astrology is just to make it easier to find your person through understanding yourself. Everyone deserves true love, that person to obsess over in a healthy way, whilst truly loving them for them, where you're not outside of the window looking in, fantasising about being in there with them. Nah, you're in there with them, making sweet love to that Neptune music. Hey, that reminds me of that Thousand Miles tune. Otherwise, you're in your room with that succubus on top of you while you're sleeping, sucking till you boss, where you wake up the next day feeling drained as hell and have no life in you, mad at the world and don't know why. Or that incubus crept in while you're sleeping in the fetal position, left you with the covers not over you and your door slightly open, where you wake up wanting to go Freddy Krueger in your workplace and you don't even know why. It's no surprise that sleep is where a Pisces will receive the most attacks, but that is also where we are most comfortable, when we are sleeping, when the soul's travelling freely. And that is why no Pisces should fear death, because that dream world is where we all permanently go. Death is an illusion, nothing dies but the vehicle you're in. To some, all this what I'm saying is fantasy and make-believe. Sup Natalie? Oh, what's that you're listening to? Videos on pieces again? Who believes in pieces? Pieces of fish? Fish god? Worshipping cod and mackerel? I'll have pilchers with me mashed potatoes, please. It's Pisces, Raymond. Pieces, Pisces, it's all the same. If you're fishes, then I'm a bear then. I'll eat you all for supper. He's talking about imaginary dating, fantasies, blind dates. Who do you think he is? Silla Black? What's your sign then? I'm sorry? What sign are you? What do you mean sign? You might as well be speaking sign language. I don't understand you, darling. When was you born, Raymond? December 16th. Oh, what are you going to say? The sign of the reindeer, eh? <laughs> Should I look up videos on Rudolph and his red nose? You're a Sag. I knew it. Thought so. Or Capricorn. Oh, really? Well, I lied. See, it's all bullshit. I was born on 9th March, 1972. Oh my God, you're Pisces. You what? March 9th, you fought under Pisces like me, I'm February 24th. No, I'm not. Oh, the irony, Raymond. You're a fish too. You still want pilchers with your mash? No, I'm not. You just got to make sense of it all, Pisces. I have dreams now and then where dead relatives come and visit me. Like I dream them in a setting and they'll like hug me or something. And I've been raised to believe that that's not good when the dead visit you and touch you and all them things. Where these dreams would scare me when I was younger. Tell certain family members and they're like, mm mm, that no good. You're for sage boy, spirit gone, take you. Then not long ago, I had a dream where my deceased cousin visited me. We were somewhere, then I saw her and she ran up to me and was kissing me all over my face like she's proud of me and happy to see me. Then I woke up feeling full of love and joy. Like I've been restored to a maximum level of love and happiness I had when I was a kid. So I decided, I don't give a fuck if that's supposed to be negative or not. As far as I see it, my cousin visited me and connected with my spirit and I felt the effects when I woke up. If that wasn't my cousin and was some demon entity in disguise, wanting to get close and harm me, then who the fuck cares? I'm not a Pisces that is afraid of death. Well, my own death anyway. I'm only afraid of not achieving what I want to before leaving here. But I choose to see it as a positive because if a spirit in a dream wants to harm you, then they will harm you. I haven't dreamt my cousin in years. I don't know how the spiritual world actually works, but imagine she spent time gathering resources and trying to find me, then finally finds me, fills me with love, then left to do the same to the rest of my family. And I'm waking up like, nah, that was a demon. The dead touched me. I'm gonna die, I need to sage. Nah, no, I had nothing but love for my cousin in real life and miss her dearly. She wouldn't be coming to do me no harm. Plus I'd know, cause like I've mentioned in another video, I've become very guarded in my dreams. My intuition is turned on when sleeping. All Pisces reach this state once you aren't abusing yourself. Cause I had a dream a couple years ago where I was standing in this empty room and a few feet away from me was this small woman who looked like a sort of voodoo witch type thing. She looked about three foot tall, no lie. But the energy she was radiating was so off. 
Then she charged at me and I fly kicked her. <laughs> I don't care. I switch in music that then woke up. You think I'm playing? Because I knew that if that woman or thing touched me in that dream that night, I either wouldn't be here right now or in a bad way. You just know when it's fuckery and I can still see that thing's image clearly. As a Pisces, you embrace it all. As I said earlier, fantasies about girls got me through school. I had a minimum of one girlfriend per year starting from nursery and countless crushes. I remember being about five, six years old and me and my friend's girlfriends at the time were best friends. The girls sat us down on the concrete playground and sang Sweet Fantasy by Mariah Carey to us. They couldn't sing, but that was a memorable gesture. You know how school relationships used to last like a week or two weeks max? So I was always switching girls. By nine, I was known by all the teachers for a poem I wrote for a girl on Valentine's Day. Left a card on her desk before class started and the teacher got nosy and told all the other teachers. By the time I got to year 6, 10, 11 years old, the end of primary, all the mums would stare at me when I walked in the gate because apparently I was a player. What made me public enemy number one was I had dramatic friends and you know how friends used to be your messengers back then. So I wanted to break up with a girl in the school and it was a little after Valentine's. So my friends thought it'd be a good idea to rip up the Valentine's card she got me in front of her. I green-lighted it without much thought and they went and did it first thing in the morning in front of the girl's mum and the other parents while saying, Dan said you're dumped. When they came back and told me they just did it and who was there, I thought you mother f So that made me look extra bad, like a heartbreaker. Funny enough, my favourite wrestler as a kid was Shawn Michaels, a cancer. Heartbreak kid. So I just acted like him any time I walked through the gate. They could stare all they wanted. I didn't show weakness. Even though it did hurt a little deep down. Because these big adults trying to bully me. <laughs> but I still carried on flirting with their daughters same way. I ended up meeting my match though. I was acting a fool one day at school. Dancing, being goofy, just being myself. Then at the end of the school day. Four girls from my year all dragged me into a corner and said. We want to go out with you. In stereo. All at the same time like they rehearsed that shit. But they was being dead serious. Go out meant be boyfriend and girlfriend in kids talk. In case that's just a UK kids lingo. So for the first time, I didn't know what to do. I was confused, lost. So I said I'll give them an answer on Monday as it was a Friday. I remember meeting up with my friend over the weekend and we literally sat down on a wall and wrote each girl's name on a piece of paper with their pros and cons listed. I couldn't believe the position I was in. This is where Pisces indecisiveness comes from. Because we deep all the avenues the decisions could lead to. I had the choice to pick out of four girls. I never fantasised about that before. Unlike now, I was just a little baby boy. I thought I was actually dreaming. Spoiled for choice. So do you know what I did on the Monday? I said no to all of them. I swam away like a coward. Like chasing one girl. Oh hell yeah, I'm on game. Four girls giving me the power to choose out of them. I didn't know what the f*** to do with that. I didn't want that kind of power over anyone. Especially at such a young age. The girl I had a crush on from about 6 years old. She was the one I used to fantasise about. But didn't ever attempt to make her my girlfriend. She was my friend. We eventually ended up together around 11. And do you know how? She got her friends to ox me out in the end. I couldn't believe it. It was like a dream come true. Out of the blue, on a random day after school, she's knocked for me with her friends. We went to the park and by the time I got home, she was my girlfriend. I didn't even walk home that day. I floated home. But do you know what happened when she was finally my girlfriend? After all these years of being my friend that I had a crush on? I didn't know what the f*** to do with her. And I was used to having a girlfriend. From early, I saw us together, eventually. But I didn't see that I would fumble the bag once I got her. Didn't know what to say to her. Stopped acting goofy around her. Was a shambles. And that Neptune revelation came to me once I was with her too. Because I started to see things I didn't see before. So she's the prettiest girl in the school right? Almost perfect. Ain't done nout wrong for all these years. But the moment she's my girlfriend. She happens to take her shit in the girls toilets on break 
and everyone's coming up to me telling me how she stunk out the toilet. The news spread like crack in the 80s. The girls' toilets seemed like the cleanest, purest place compared to the boys' pissy smelly toilets back then. So for the prettiest girl in the school to desecrate that sanctuary, I was in disbelief. And plus she's my girlfriend, oh the horror. My young brain couldn't believe it. And yes, maybe that was indirectly my fault. She could have been a silent school toilet shit off for years where others were just getting the blame and me being with her exposed her but that ruined many guys dreams in the school that day. That was like finding out Santa isn't real or what Michael Jackson was apparently doing to Kevin from Home Alone in Neverland. And then, okay cool, we're all growing going through puberty but I didn't understand all the changes taking place at the time especially with the girls. So I'm sitting next to her, not talking to her like a lemon then I look down and see all these hairs on her legs. I thought to myself, what? Girls don't have hairs on their legs, what's going on? I don't even have hairs on my legs. So she went from my fantasy girl, the prettiest girl in the whole school, to the log dropper with hairy legs that I didn't even know how to talk to. It's like my dreams got crushed very fast because even though I was young, Neptune was still like, yo, your fantasies was on point, but it's still a little warped. You got your crush now, but here's the real about her. You still want her after this, homeboy? And this is what I say about Pisces. All your dreams do come true. Your fantasies will come true. It just might not be the version of it that you wanted, but you get it. And I didn't want that version, so I ended up breaking up with her after like a week. On a it's not working out thing. I didn't ridicule her or anything, but I was discombobulated. I'm sure she was planning to break up with me anyway. That week felt like a year, a nightmare. It's like Neptune bitch slapped the hell out of my pubescent cheeks that week. But you can also kind of see a pattern there. For the ladies listening who are interested in a Pisces male, you going after him could put him off. So let him come to you and also be prepared for when Neptune slaps him with some truths about you. Same if you're with a Pisces female fellas. Neptune gonna show her extra shit about you a bit later in the relationship. So you ain't off the hook until you're off the hook. And I know some of you listening may be thinking I'm fantasizing about my childhood and it wasn't like that. You didn't get girls, bruh. You're a Pisces. You're probably quiet as hell. But I'll show you some of the messages I received from the girls in my Leavers yearbook just to back up these stories. I've got zero reason to lie to you people. This could be your Pisces child in the future or right now. You need to watch that little lover kid you got there. Luckily, my Scorpio mum kept all my school stuff. So as you can imagine, secondary school was worse. More girls and girls and I was even trying to chat up women my mother's age on their way to work. They'd mainly just laugh because I'm like 13 in a school uniform saying I'll take you out and keep you warm on a cold night to a 35 year old. But I was dead serious. I was a lovesick kid for real. Pursuing unrealistic and realistic fantasies. But getting girls numbers my age was an everyday thing and was easy as hell. Everything just flowed naturally. They say you can learn charisma, but a Pisces charm is just built in. That Venus influence is different. Some Pisces need a little nudge to unlock it, but others have it unlocked from the jump. And it's long lasting. It's not just charm to soften you up for the moment. It remains there forever sweetening you because charm isn't even about the charmer. It's about the other person. So that's why Libra is known as the charmer of the Zodiac because they're about the other person and due to being ruled by Venus and being an air sign, so communication. They do not stop talking, which also means they do not stop charming. Evolved Leos are charmers too, giving others the spotlight and so on, you get the gist. A few signs has their own way of charm. But put Venus in a sign that it loves to be in, that is also mutable, which means adaptable to people and everything else, then you get a Pisces. How can I remain hidden? but at the same time make another person feel special about their self. That's what the Pisces charm is. And that is why a Pisces will typically be known as charming. Because at the end of the day, charm is... Magic. But surprisingly, very surprisingly, my situation right now is a childhood sweetheart situation. Who I was fantasizing about when I was mid-teens is who I am with right now and have been with ever since. So I guess I turned out alright. They say you've already met your soulmate by 21, apparently. But that rang true for me. And I'm grateful because how I was heading 
I was looking at numerous baby mums, STDs. My friends predicted I'd have 10 baby mums by 30 and all of that. And they wasn't joking either. I just naturally love to love. So I just did that. This is how Pisces seem codependent. But Pisces are very self-reliant and comfy alone. I love my freedom more than anything else. Without it, these videos wouldn't exist. My awareness of myself wouldn't exist. It's just we've all got this love to give. So being alone in regards to love doesn't make sense. It's just like a Libra, but spiritually with us. It doesn't make sense to the soul. We need to connect with someone deeply. You know how they say when you meet the right person you just know? Even when you don't know the person yet. Pisces knows because they see it in their fantasies. And if they don't see it, then it ain't the right person. It's that simple. Because of the timelines thing I mentioned, I don't believe we all only have one soulmate. But I do believe the one you do find and don't mess it up with and stay with after the Neptune bitch slap is the one you're supposed to be with. That love at first sight feeling, that Pisces days, that fascination, that honeymoon phase is able to last forever with Pisces. It's timeless. They've just got to navigate that fantasy timeline correctly. That stuff will have Pisces living on a real life Mario Kart rainbow road. A real magical journey with pink clouds. Where that fantasy isn't in their head anymore. It's in reality with the person beside them. And this is also why others shouldn't be going around Pisces thinking they're deluded or spaced out because you don't know how far that Pisces is coming from. Anyway, hopefully my book stays closed forever. But if not, I'm coming for all your mums, your aunties, your sisters, your grandmas. I'm coming for you too if you're female. I'll turn pescatarian on you. Fishes eat other fishes in every way. Just remember, Venus alone, that's the gaze, the attraction and could lead to conditional love. The rose tint glasses. Neptune is the idealism, also with the rose tints, but it's also the path to true unconditional love. Once the mist clears, Jupiter is the wisdom that just ties it all together. Wake up, because there's more that you should see. It's how you thought that it would be, but you should know that there's more to the story. It isn't always glory, could be ending up on Mori. Here's the rest of what you saw, so please deep it. Hey Natalie, I listened to that link you sent me. What's his name? Dan Gargan? He's a bit loopy, ain't he? He said I got a shark in me, but that's impossible. Where would the shark fit? So next time you go into that daze when you see someone you like, understand what is happening there, Pisces, and what to do about it. Because I don't want to catch any of you outside anyone's window, giving us a bad name. Now shut your ass up, put your seatbelts back on, and make sure that I was clear. We'll be arriving at our destination shortly.